Hello, welcome back to the channel. It is Dan Nocter Knives. Today, coming at you with a quick first impressions video of this knife, the Spider Coast Sage 2. I got this knife in for sharpening the other day and some modification work, and it's a really interesting knife. I thought I would just do a quick video about it because it is a pretty well known knife and kind of hard to come by nowadays that it's been discontinued a little bit harder to get your hands on. And I've really enjoyed it in the time that I've had it. It seems like a really cool, really well-made, really nice little knife. So I'm excited to get some opinions out there on this video. Hopefully some of you will enjoy it, get something out of it, maybe if you've been looking to pick one of these up. So this knife is the Spyderco Sage 2. This is in Spyderco's well-known Sage line. It's the same pattern, same design knife, but they use it to showcase different types of locks. So they've done ones with liner locks, this one is a frame lock, they have a compression lock, they have one in this weird bolt lock kind of thing, and it's been a long-running knife in Spyderco line, in their Taichung made line. This one came into me just normal stock Sage 2, that is a plain blasted titanium handle, and the customer wanted me to anodize it blue, so I gave this a 27 volt blue anodizing. It's just a really nice, neutral, kind of dusty blue. I think it looks really good on this knife. And I sharpened up the edge to 1000 grit on my Edge Pro. It looks awesome and it's super sharp. It's kind of, it's bordering on mirror polished after some stropping, but it is just 1000 grit. Show you this edge in action. It came out just screaming sharp. You can see cross-cutting this phone book paper absolute with just ease. Do some S-cuts, super easy, just effortless. Do some push-cuts, just it just bites right in, no, no resistance, super easy. So yeah, I'm very happy with how this edge came out. Now, to start this off, we'll do some measurements, some specs, and then throw out some size comparisons. So starting off in overall length, we have just over seven inches, maybe seven and an eighth inches for the blade length coming in right on three inches and cutting edge is just over two and a half, maybe two and five eighths. Measure the blade stock, I believe it's one eighth, just slightly under an eighth inch and then get the behind the edge thickness coming in at about 16 thousandths. And it feels pretty consistent through the entire length. I think it's about 16 all the way across the edge. Do some size comparisons now, get the two standards out, got the Spyderco Pair 3 and Pair Military 2. Overall length coming in just very slightly shorter then the pair of three, maybe an eighth inch shorter than the pair of three. It looks a little deceiving on the camera, but trust me on that. And they're all lined up on the pivots here. And then for the paramilitary two, it's coming in about, about one and a third inches shorter overall. In blade length, maybe hmm, half inch off. Blade length versus the pair of three, it's actually got slightly more blade than the pair of three, just slightly, and just like a sixteenth more cutting edge. And then thickness wise, coming in a little bit thinner than the pair of three. Here's a Spyderco Delica and a Booze Blades Mini Smoke, two more knives kind of in this rough size range. Here are two tie frame locks, these are both front flippers. We got the Sharp Eye Design Mini Tempest and the Booze Blades Custom Arrow Front Flipper. And here's a, another good EDC choice, the TRM Atom. You can see this Sage is coming in a decent bit shorter than the Atom. And then finally, another Spyderco frame lock. You have the Swish Bowie. This is the Knife Joy exclusive version. And it's really not too far off in overall size. Maybe a half inch difference between these two. That's enough size comparisons. I think got some relevant ones out of the way. Now I'll jump into some likes, some neutrals, and some dislikes. So to start it off on the likes, 
is going to be the build quality on this knife. It's made really well. Taichung Taiwan plant is doing some of Spyderco's best work. I think it's generally agreed upon, and this is really no exception. Have perfect blade centering. All the edges are nice and smooth. You have these nice chamfers on the handle. Really well made, well machined. All the tolerances are good. The standoffs are... They fit into their slots really well. The jimping is cut nicely. The action is good. It's very smooth. Very smooth. Overall, just a very well-made knife. Next like is going to be the ergonomics. For the most part, I really like these ergonomics. For the most part, there's one little issue that I'll touch on later. But it just it fits really well. It just wraps into your hand like a Spyderco. A lot of Spydercos do this. Especially in this forward grip, you got the finger choil, you got the thumb ramp, rest your fingers wrap around the handle, and you feel totally locked in, really comfortable. Your middle finger kind of tucks into this gap right here. Your other two fingers are sitting on this flat bit. Very comfortable in this grip. Pinch grip feels really nice. No jimping here to be aggravating your finger in the pinch grip. Draw cut, pretty good. The handle is a little bit small, so you're kind of pinch between these two points, but it's not bad. Drop, cut, pinch, very nice. Like this, that's good too. If you were, say, opening a package and just wanted to dip the tip in, this is very nice. You can easily get out to the tip with your pointer finger, at least with my hand size. Your middle finger can wrap into this choil right here. It feels like you have a lot of control, a lot of precision. You can easily grab the blade for any tasks like this. And with this generous choil, I think any hand, really any hand size could probably fit on this. Because even if your hands are too big to be in this back position, you just move up here. And I bet anyone could get four fingers on this knife. Next like is going to be the deployment, specifically the Spidey Flick. It's really good on this knife. The hole is positioned super well. The detent is well tuned for a Spidey Flick. And it just works effortlessly. And it's really fun. Put your finger here, push out, and the blade just flies open. Makes a nice, satisfying clack. It's really well positioned. You can pinch with your forefinger and your thumb. Your middle finger lands here naturally, and boom, flicks open. Super easy. You can also get thumb flick without too much trouble. I suppose you could do spidey drop, and of course, slow roll. My next like, I like that this is a frame lock. You don't see that many frame locks from Spyderco. They do a lot more compression locks, back locks, stuff like that. So it's nice to see a, a frame lock Spidey. It's nice to see more of these. And on this one, the lock face is carbonized or carburized. I'm not sure which one. At least that's what it looks like. So there's absolutely no stick. Like, it's a completely smooth disengagement. And there's no up and down play. Totally not even a hint of stick. So that's done. The frame lock on this is done very nicely. My next like is the jimping. I really like the jimping that's on this knife. A lot of Spydercos, for example, the Paramilitary 2 utilize this very rough, sharp jimping, which gives you a lot of traction, but in longer cutting, harder cutting, it can really get a little aggravating on your thumb or wherever the jimping happens to be. This jimping, it's there, it's providing traction, but it's really nicely rounded. So I appreciate that. It's same, same thing here. It's nice and rounded, it gives you a little bit of traction, but it's not digging and cutting into your thumb. So I appreciate how the jimping is done on this knife. And then my last like are all the chamfers and nicely knocked down edges on this handle. All the edges here have this beautiful chamfer goes around the entire knife on the cutout for the lock bar here you can see this nice generous chamfer over here just chamfers and softened edges everywhere really nice to see makes it super comfortable and even on the inside of the handle you can see a nice consistent chamfer and then on this lock bar you can see they've just done an extra rounding right here where your thumb is going to go to disengage you can see the chamfer and then it goes to a rounding here. So those are all very nice touches. It makes for a very comfortable grip, kind of wherever your hand happens to land. You're not hitting sharp edges or anything like that. And then my last like, 
actually, I have one more. I lied. I have one more like. It's going to be this pocket clip. The wire pocket clip from Spyderco is well liked because it performs quite well. It's adequately strong. It looks nice. It's good ergonomically. You have these softened points here. They're not sharp or anything. And on this knife, they just kind of tuck. They tuck into this crease in your hand right here. And then it carries at a really nice depth. You can see you'll have just a little bit of this knife sticking out, like that much, quarter inch or so. Oh, and I lied again. I actually have one more like, and it's going to be the hardware. All of this hardware takes the same size bit. Everything on here is a T8, and that's a really, really nice thing. It makes disassembly and reassembly just easier. It just simplifies everything. You need one bit. And all of these are lock keyed on one side. All the standoffs and the pivot are keyed on one side. So there's nothing free spinning here. Really nice touch. And these standoffs, they're shouldered on each side. So you're getting a lot of location and stability between these handles. My next like is going to be this blade. It's just a really, really nice blade. Very thin. You're looking at 16 thousandths behind the edge and with a full flat grind and a pretty thin under eighth inch starting thickness for the stock, this blade is going to cut really, really well. It's Spyderco's CPM S30B. We all know Spyderco is well known for their heat treats, doing a good job consistently with pretty much every steel they use. So I think this S30V will be a performer. It felt very nice on the stones. Everything went well. It was easy to work with, felt good. And the edge came up very sharp, very easily. So this blade, I think, is a winner. And this nice neutral leaf shape is just really good for pretty much any task you can want. It has a bit of belly, but the tip is low enough that it's easy to, say, cut paper or do utility cuts like this on a board. But it has enough belly that you can do a rocking push cut, say you're cutting rope or something like that. So great blade on the Sage. I think that might be my number one like is it's just a really good, solid, usable knife with a usable blade. Now onto my neutrals. I don't really have any neutrals on this knife. And then getting onto my dislikes, I really, I really don't have many dislikes at all. I like a lot of things about this knife. Um, my first dislike is going to be just a little bit of the ergonomics. So in this grip, in a saber grip, back here on the handle without utilizing the choil, it feels a little bit empty right here because you have this big cutout. So when your pointer finger wraps around it, it just feels a little bit empty. Like you don't really have anything to grab onto. It feels like there should be something here, but you wrap your finger around there and you just get this empty space. So I'm not a huge fan of that. It's not a huge ergonomic issue, but it's not my favorite. Now, admittedly, most of the time you're probably using this choked up grip, and you're probably not going to use a saber grip back here on the handle too often, but it's not my favorite on this knife. Other sages with, say, the compression lock are going to be more comfortable in this grip because they don't have this cutout, this lock bar access cutout. And I've, I handled one quite recently, and it was definitely more comfortable in this handle grip. Now, my next dislike is that there's no over-travel stop on this lock bar. I don't mind that it doesn't have an insert. I don't think it needs one. This thing is carburized or carbonized, and it has absolutely no lock stick here. You can look at how much it's locking up at about 60%, 50-60%, which is a great range for it to be locking up in plenty of life left but it's very secure and it has absolutely no stick so i don't think it needs an insert but an over travel stop would be a nice touch just because i could see someone maybe someone who's newer to knives or if you were in a little too much of a hurry i think you could tweak this lock bar out it doesn't have an insane amount of pressure and i think if you were really you were amped up a little had some adrenaline pumping I think you could tweak this lock bar out. Has it ever happened? I don't know. I've I've never seen a report of that happening, but I think it's something that could. And just having a lock bar over travel stop on here, there are no downsides really, and it just prevents that possibility from ever happening. 
And I think those are my only two dislikes. Oh, I actually did think of a neutral just now. This doesn't have any internal milling. It's just two flat slabs. Now, does it need internal milling? I don't think so. Not necessarily. You can see the balance here is right about where you can be pointing your pointer finger in this handle grip. So to get the balance, it doesn't really necessarily need some weight reliefs on the inside, but would it hurt anything? No, just some small pocketing on the inside, some internal milling. Just drop, you know, a couple tenths of an ounce. Just make it slightly more carryable. Oh, and then another neutral. Actually, I thought of one more. It's going to be the width in pocket. This thing is kind of wide closed. I mean, that's par for the course with Spydercos. You can see here it is with the Para 2. It's going to be pretty much the same at its widest point as the PM2. So that's just kind of how Spydercos go. Here's something coming in a little bit thinner, the TRM Atom, or more narrow, or something significantly more narrow like the Sharp by Design Mini Tempest. So is that a huge uh, real problem? I don't think so. I don't usually mind a little width in my pocket. It's usually not a huge issue to me, but if you're trying to fit 50 different things in the same pocket with this, that might be a bit of a problem for you. And I think those are all my likes, neutral dislikes on this knife. Just the two dislikes, the slight ergonomic issue and the lack of over travel stop. There's really, I don't have many negatives for this knife. I think it's a really good knife. Now we'll move on to some final conclusions. So this knife, it's, as I said, a classic in Spyderco's lineup, the Sage 2 with this nice titanium frame lock. It has been discontinued, so these are definitely a little bit harder to get your hands on. The prices really aren't insane. They just don't come up too often. And when they do, they get snapped up pretty quickly. A lot of things I really like about this knife. I like the frame lock. I like the hardware. The blade on this is excellent. It has really soft jimping that's still effective. It doesn't tear your hand up. And the build quality on this, as with most Taichung Spydercos, is very high quality. Not much on the neutral side. It could have some internal milling, but it's really not a huge issue. The balance on it is fine, and it's not that heavy overall. And it's a little bit wide in pocket, but that's not a huge issue for me personally. And it's nothing out of the ordinary for Spyderco. And then really two, only two soft negatives can be the lack of the over-travel stop and this slight empty feeling as you're holding it in on the handle. Other than that, I don't have much bad to say about this knife at all. I really do think it is a nice knife. And this has kind of made me want to get one, partly because it is such a classic knife. Such a good everyday carry knife. I mean, this blade is just phenomenal. It's very well ground, great blade shape. The frame lock is a little fun, a little different from Spyderco, and I think it's a really nice frame lock. Easy access, good action. Those Tai Chung frame locks are definitely high quality. You can see a similar thing with the Swish Bowie. Just a very high quality frame lock. It might be time for Spider Co. to bring this knife back in a sprint run. I think that'd be fun. A new Sage 2, do it in a fancy steel, something like that. I think that'd be pretty cool. If you have a Sage 2, you've been looking to pick one up, or you have any thoughts about them, I would love to hear them go down, drop a comment down below. Let me know what do you think about the Sage 2, owning one, looking to pick one up, whatever it is. While you're down there, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, it would definitely help me out. You like sharpening content, knife content, all that sort of stuff. And I think that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.